been a rough stretch for Arizona football. The Wildcats haven't been to a bowl game in five years and are just 15 and 38 during that span. But could this be the year that Arizona ends their postseason drought? Jed Fish has his best team since he took over in Tucson three years ago, and this could be the year that Arizona finally gets over the hump and gets back to the postseason. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Our picks there, college football and NFL spread picks, beating out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last five years. As that five-year period that Arizona's been struggling, we've been thriving when it comes to our spread picks. So take advantage of those. It's guaranteed money right back in your pocket. Take advantage of our Patreon account as well. Exclusive college football content year-round over there. Become a member of our Patreon wall of fame and gain access to content that we won't put out anywhere else but on Patreon. And also, check out our mailing address. Send us some gear to put in our gridiron backgrounds. We continue to work on developing that, especially in preparation for this season. Get us some West Coast representation, some Pac-12 representation as we expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. So let's take a look at Arizona. You know, we knew it was a massive rebuild. You know, Kevin Sumlin was thought to have done some pretty good things there. I thought he was going to, at least. Didn't pan out. Jed Fish comes in. Horrible first year. Massive improvement last year. Now entering year three, where most coaches hit their stride. Could this be the year that they get over the hump? They went five and seven last year, as we mentioned. And it feels like this could be the year that, again, they reach that coveted sixth win. And the reason that's going to be the case, if they get there, is their offense. The offense is unbelievable. Eight starters back on that side of the ball. One that averaged over 30 points per game last year. 462 yards per game last year, including 318 passing yards per game. It all starts, of course, with their quarterback, Jaden Delora, who threw for over 3,600 yards and 25 touchdowns in 2022. Five of their top six pass catchers are coming back this year. Their leading rusher and Michael Wiley is coming back this year after rushing for over 770 yards and eight touchdowns. This Arizona offense from top to bottom is going to be really, really tough to stop. The one thing that could hold them back, kind of pros and cons list here, the offense, fantastic, probably can hang with anybody in the conference. The defense is what's going to be their Achilles heel, and that's what it was last year. Gave up 36.5 points per game, 209 rushing yards per game, 259 passing yards per game, and they only returned three starters on that side of the ball. They lose six of their top seven tacklers. They lose their top three players in their secondary. They loaded up on transfers, though, especially on the defensive line, which is great because Arizona only had 16 sacks last year. They've got to create more pressure. They've got to find a way to stop the run, but it's going to be a tall task getting those guys to jail immediately as Arizona faces, again, a relatively tough schedule in 2023. You take a look at it. Obviously, that non-conference game at Mississippi State stands out. Not an easy game at all. And the Pac-12 is being absolutely loaded this year. Games against Washington and USC, Oregon State, UCLA, Utah. They do luckily get to avoid Oregon, but that's really about the only plus that I see on this schedule. But you take a look at it, I think they open up 1-0. They'll beat Northern Arizona. No slouch out of the FCS, but should get the win there. Then they go on the road to Mississippi State. <clears throat> we just talked about it. We talked about that Arizona defense. It's going to struggle a little bit. And they played Mississippi State last year close for a little bit. And the Bulldogs pulled away, won 39-17. Wildcats gave up 320 passing yards in that game. Obviously, the Bulldogs are going through a massive change after the tragic passing of Mike Leach. They're under new management now, and Zach Arnett, the defensive coordinator, being promoted to the head coach. But they still have one of the better quarterbacks, not just in the SEC, but in the country, in Will Rogers. So while it might not be primarily air raid like we were so used to seeing under Mike Leach, the Bulldogs aren't going to not let Will Rogers go out there and sling it. And facing a secondary that I think is going to struggle a little bit this year, Mississippi State should take care of business, especially in Starkville, with those cowbells clanging against a Power 5 opponent. They should beat UTEP in Week 3, so they're 2-1 and one heading into conference play, the bulk of conference play. And that's where, that's where it matters. That's where your season's made. Their first conference game for them, luckily, is against a bad Stanford team. Give the Wildcats a victory there, just like that. They are 3-1. and one. These two teams have not met. Being in the same conference, they haven't met since 2019, but I do think it's going to be a relatively comfortable win for Arizona. Stanford team that returned six starters total. New coach in Troy Taylor coming over from Sacramento State. Offense is putrid. Won't be able to keep up with the Wildcats here. It should just be a pretty comfortable, easy sailing game for the Wildcats, despite it being on the road. So three and one heading in to their final game of September against Washington. This is a fun one. 
This is a fun one. I think this is going to be a game that's going to feature a lot of offense, just like it did last year. Washington beating the Wildcats 49-39. to 39. So a lot of points were scored. And you've got the number one passing offense in the country last year in Washington going up against one of the better passing offenses as well in the country, top 20 at least, in Arizona after throwing for over 318 passing yards per game. But last year, that Arizona secondary that is now more depleted than it was last year gave up 516 passing yards to Michael Penix and the Huskies. I know the Wildcats get to host this game, but I just don't see that secondary being able to slow down Michael Penix. I just don't see it. Now, I will say Arizona did a pretty good job of holding their own. They only lost by 10, had 400 passing yards of their own. Again, I think it's going to be a great battle between Penix and Jaden Delora. But right now, this is a Washington team that's a legitimate Pac-12 title contender. Offense is great. Defense is loaded with like eight starters coming back on that side of the ball. They're going to be just fine. Huskies get the win, and Arizona goes into October, first month of the season out of the way, at 3-2, and two, halfway to bowl eligibility. Doesn't get any easier, though. Right after Washington, they play arguably the Pac-12 favorite in USC, and they have to go on the road to the Coliseum to do that. They only lost the Trojans by eight last year. Keep that in mind. 45 to 37. They are within two points of USC last year in the third quarter, but just couldn't get over the hump, couldn't have enough to muster that upset. They had 543 yards of offense against the Trojans, who, again, as we all know, are great offensively, not so much defensively. But while they had 543 yards of offense, Arizona gave up 621 to Caleb Williams and that dynamic Lincoln Riley led team. That's the problem, right? Typically, most teams, if you put up over 500 yards of offense on somebody, you're going to win the game. Not for Arizona. They could do that week in and week out, but the defense couldn't get stops. And if they can't do that again this year, it's not going to transition into that big breakout year that we're hoping to see from Jed Fitch. They're not going to beat US, USC on the road. I just don't see it. So now the Wildcats back to 500. And then they go to Pullman and take on Washington State. And what I'm just going to start calling the Jaden Delora game. Delora beginning his career with the Cougars, transferring to Arizona. And last year, you know, many thought that, okay, Jaden Delora is going to beat Washington State, right? Like, you know, he's getting to host the Cougars. They're having to come to him. It's going to be at home. He's going to light up this Washington State team. And he didn't. Washington State came into Tucson and won 31 to 20. And a lot of that's thanks to turnovers. Arizona minus three in the turnover margin in that game last year. Washington State's defense under Jake Dickert, a brilliant defensive line, is typically pretty solid. I think they're going to have enough to slow down this Wildcats team. I really do. I think Washington State makes them one-dimensional. I think they're going to force them to win the game by running the ball, something that Arizona is capable of doing, no doubt about it, but not something they want to do. They want to be a little bit more balanced offensively. They want to have that one-two punch. Washington State won't allow it, especially in Pullman. Factor in that Cam Ward, the quarterback for Washington State, is in another year with the Cougars. This offense should be a little bit better after disappointing with his 26 and a half points per game last year. Washington State gets to win in Pullman, and just like that, Arizona goes from 3-1, and one, things are looking great, to below 500 at 3-4, and four, and are now on a three-game losing streak heading into their bye week. I will tell you that I think their losing streak continues out of the bye week. I won't even you know hesitate. I think they're going to lose to Oregon State. I do think it's a bit of a trap game for the Beavers. I think that if they're not careful, they will lose this game. But I really like what Jonathan Smith is doing in Corvallis. Uh, upgrading the team at quarterback with DJ Uyunga Lay. The running game is phenomenal. And that's the major reason I'm giving Oregon State the edge here. Even though Arizona gets to host out in the desert, you've got an Oregon State team that averaged 196 rushing yards per game with guys like Damian Martinez and Deshaun Fenwick, both of which are back in Corvallis this year. Upgraded quarterback play with DJ Uyunga Lay, a defense that was solid last year, will be again this year. I don't see Jonathan Smith allowing his team to slip up. Again, especially against an Arizona defense that gave up over 200 rushing yards per game last year. Arizona defensively could be 40 yards better against the run, and they're still giving up 164 rushing yards per game. That is more than enough for Oregon State to go out there and annihilate them on the ground. Beavers win big on October 28th. I think it could be a trap game, but I think they're going to come in and surprise. Arizona now drops four straight games. They're three and five. They've got to start turning things around. And where do they turn things around? They turn them around against UCLA. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, come on. UCLA, are you kidding me? That's what I thought last year when Arizona upset the ninth-ranked Bruins at the Rose Bowl, 34-28. to UCLA was in the driver's seat, man. They were looking good. They had playoff hopes. They may have had a shot at making the pack. They had a shot at making the Pac-12 championship. They had a shot at making the college football playoff. And Arizona said, "No, we're going to ruin those for you, and we're going to ruin it on your home turf." It was stunning. 
Now, I think it's an upset from last year that people aren't talking about nearly enough. So why am I picking Arizona to win this game? Because I still have a lot of faith in this offense from the Wildcats. I have a lot of faith in Jaden Delora and what Jetfish is building offensively. I believe that Arizona, a team that was not that great last year, can beat a better UCLA team last year than they're going to have this year. The Bruins now without Dorian Thompson-Robinson. They're without Zach Charbonnet. They're without a lot of key pieces from last year. If they can win at UCLA with those guys, I think Arizona can now win at home without those guys to the Bruins. The logic there lines up for me. I think it will be a close game. UCLA is certainly going to want revenge after getting that heartbreak last year and kind of ruining every postseason aspiration that they had. But I think Arizona turns things around. They realize in the month of November, hey, we've got to wake up. We've got to win three of our final four games. If we want a shot to go to the postseason, it's going to start with a win over the Bruins. They're going to continue that success on the road at Colorado. They beat the Buffaloes 43-20 to last year. Jaden Delora, six touchdowns against the Buffaloes. Absolutely had a day. And while Colorado certainly will be much better and more competitive than that 1-11 team we saw last year, I'm just not solely buying in to that Deion Sanders hype. I'm not buying into all the transfers that Arizona has, or excuse me, that Colorado has brought in this year. So despite the game being in Boulder, I just don't see the Buffaloes with so many key new pieces and new coach putting it together to face a team that, again, is fighting for their postseason lives. Arizona beats the Buffaloes. They've got five wins. They've got to go one and one down the stretch to go to the postseason. And it's ultimately going to come down to that last game of the year at Arizona State because they're not beating Utah on senior day. The Utes simply are too good. They beat Arizona 45-20 to last year. That defense is phenomenal. The offense returns Cam Rising and a solid offensive line. It's just not happening. They're going to spoil Arizona Senior Day. So this is what you live for, right? Rivalry week, so much at stake, trophy game, bragging rights, everything. But now postseason birth on the line for Arizona. That's what you live for. You win, you go to the postseason. You lose, you stay home. Arizona State, they might find themselves in the same situation, or they might not with a new coach in Kenny Dillingham, but they might say, hey, we can't go to a bowl game. This is our bowl game. If we can keep our in-state rival from going to the postseason, we consider that a win. And that's exactly what they're going to get. Arizona, for the second straight year, is going to fall just short of making the postseason. I'm picking the Sun Devils to win at home on their senior day. An Arizona State team that has won seven of the last ten games against the Wildcats. An Arizona State team that lost last year 38-35 to thanks to tons and tons of turnovers. But I have a lot of faith in Kenny Dillingham. I think he's going to lay a solid foundation this year. They get a quarterback upgrade and Drew Pine transferring in from Notre Dame. And more than anything, Arizona State arguably has the best secondary in the Pac-12 this year. Hard to believe, I know. But they do. That secondary is elite. If they can shut down Jaden Delora, force Arizona again to be one-dimensional by running the ball, they can do it. They're not going to do it well. Arizona State at home wins their bowl game in the season finale, and Arizona finishes the year at 5-7 and seven for the second straight year. Again, it's tough. There's a lot of winnable games on the schedule that Arizona just needs one to get that sixth win. Maybe it comes against Arizona State. Maybe it comes against Oregon State out of the bye week. Maybe it's Washington State and Pullman, Jane Delora getting revenge over his former team. But I don't see them beating Mississippi State. I certainly don't see them on the same level as any of the top dogs in the Pac-12, like a USC, like a Washington, like a Utah. Arizona's right there, guys. They're close. They're one massive upset away. I just don't see them getting it this year. Jed Fish drops to 5-7 and seven in year three. He sticks around one more time next year, but next year is the year. They have to go bowling. If they don't, he's out. And Arizona might enter rebuild mode once again. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com, our Patreon account for exclusive college football content year-round. Check out our mailing address to send us some gear to get represented in every single GE video to expand our nation from coast to coast. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,